three, two, one. Three, two, one. You get it? It's like I did the intro from the, in- the its own intro. You get it? Oh. Hi. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Adam I from Your Movie Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sardonicast. <laughs> I'm Ralph from Ralph the Movie Maker. <clears throat> yeah, Sorry, I had to throat. Throat. Jesus. <laughs> And I'm Alex from IG, and we are joined by a very special guest. Hey, guys. Who is this? Uh, yes, hi, I'm Jared. Uh, I, I'm an actor, film person, mm-hmm. student <laughs> uh, in, in a state of 2020. Yeah, it's a mood. Yeah, man. So what might people uh, recognize you from? Because you, oh, you've yeah. done some acting in some pretty pretty dank films i think mm-hmm. Th- uh, thank you so yeah people you, you would know me from uh, moonrise kingdom i was uh, directed by wes anderson wanderson <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just made a reference to, to to a line in the new charlie kaufman book which we've both been reading we're about at the same point i, I read a little more this this morning i'm on chapter 20 yeah you're uh, way ahead of me oh how is it it's great yeah it, i mean it's it's very much sort of like a satirical take on like film criticism or like yeah you know wrapping it in a lot, a lot more kaufman-esque type mm-hmm. themes yeah imagine, it's yeah. it's somehow simultaneously about everything <laughs> yeah yeah it usually does at the same it time about right it's it's very kaufman and kind that's the book oh yeah yeah it's really good okay yeah. i can't wait to get more okay. through it I've, it's i've just been get like on Amazon. going through it so slowly i don't give myself that much time to read but so I'm sure everybody's curious. Uh, like, what was it? What was it like to work with Wes Anderson? It was. Uh, I mean, to this day, it still is like kind of a, my favorite life experience. That's awesome. And you're pretty young when that happened. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was. It was a real like whirlwind experience. But like, I I surprisingly do not have any kind of like horror stories or anything. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that nowadays it's kind <laughs> he of he wasn't a, a Kubrick. No, if you're referring to like uh, the uh, the Shining, yeah, <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't abusive. <laughs> no, Wes, Wes is like opposite, uh, total <laughs> polar opposite. Very, mm-hmm. very like aware of like everyone on set, or you know, all those actors, and very nurturing for especially the scouts um, mm-hmm. and, and uh, Kara and me. So how did that uh, how did that come about? Like, how did you get into acting? Also, was that something that like you were particularly super passionate about, or you know, was there any kind of like influence from your parents? Or I, I just sort of started taking acting classes when I was uh, eight, nine years old, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Through my acting coach, uh, I met and then signed with my managers, mm-hmm. and then Moonrise was uh, like the second or third audition i'd ever gone on oh wow which yeah i got like lucky (laughs) in a sense Mm -hmm. like yeah it it took like six months the whole process um between my first audition and then me eventually then being cast okay uh and then a total of four auditions over the course of those six months how long was the production like from the first rehearsal to like when you wrapped it up the production was in Rhode Island mm-hmm. for about like two to two and a half months uh, in 2011. And it, already by that age, I was very much a fan of a lot of those people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was already very, yeah. I had already oh, really? had sort of like my Ghostbusters phase and <laughs> uh, uh, a bunch, yeah, a bunch of Bill Murray movies actually. Ghostbusters, What About Bob, Groundhog Day. Mm-hmm. And I think after I got cast, I watched Caddyshack. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Caddyshack's funny. Because, you know, I was only 12. You know, Obviously, I hadn't seen, like, all the R-rated movies that my co-stars <laughs> had acted in. Mm-hmm. So you were also in Patterson by <laughs> yeah. Jim Jarmusch. Both you and, I forget her name, kind of had a scene together. Kara? Did that just, like, yeah, did, did that just kind of... Like, was it just a random audition and then you just decided to be serendipitous or did he specifically say like, hey, I want the Moonrise Kingdom kids in my movie? Like, how did that come about? Uh, It was uh, indeed the latter. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I want to take those characters and make them anarchists. (laughs) Yeah, the package too. It was really interesting too because like we only knew that scene. We didn't, he didn't give us the full script for the movie. Yeah, it was a pretty contained scene. Yeah, and we shot it in a day on yeah. Columbus Day, twenty fifteen. Uh, I remember, 
I remember that day really, really well. Because I, I had off from school, so I did not have to do any, like, schooling on set. Did the scene, ate lunch, did more scene, and then wrapped. <laughs> so, uh, you're taking film school for, like, directing stuff. So is that what you ultimately would like to be doing with your career? It's a question I kind of ask myself mm -hmm. a lot, or I had been asking myself a lot. I think... So to, I guess, get a little more specific in terms of what I've done, uh, like at NYU, like the classes that I've taken so far. And most recently, it's, uh, I did like my intermediate short film, mm -hmm. which is like the step below thesis. So it's like a three to eight minute short. Will that be, uh, published anywhere? Might show up on YouTube? I'm still figuring it out, but mm -hmm. I, uh, well, you know, I guess at this point, I'm maybe at a stage where I'm like nostalgic. What do you mean by that? <laughs> For last year, like in turn, you oh, know, just like of quarantine and all that shit. Being able to actually do the courses properly. Yeah. You know, actually like working on stuff with other people. Yeah. It's kind of a necessity. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, an experience I, I valued a lot. Uh, so I took that. And then the following semester, I did a class called Sight and Sound Filmmaking. And mm -hmm. the idea with that is that you're put into like crews of four and you're sent out and you have to make a one to five minute short uh every two weeks wow but it's each one of you so it's like you, you know you're working on each other's films like every weekend or ideally that's how it works that was like a really fun experience i got to make a bunch of really really scrappy some literal some abstract shorts mm -hmm. i guess my final literally i i just shot it edited it uh uploaded it wrote my production book and all that shit and then I thought of the plot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> it was like one of those things. It's it's like a, it really kind of puts you through a uh, like a creative grinder yeah, in a way. Yeah, it's like not a bad exercise. Yeah, it definitely helped me. I think also just sort of figure out what I'm interested in visually, mm -hmm. where my instincts seem to be taking me, and all that. Yeah, you just gotta learn hands on. Like that's the best way to learn is just doing it. It almost almost became kind of nostalgic for me because I, I when i was like a kid I, I used to just like make dumb stupid like action shorts with like my uh f friend mm -hmm. who lived a few houses down the street i think all of us did yeah yeah, yeah we did <laughs> i mean it's a it's a necessary thing though i think it's like a yeah. good thing to learn when you're young yeah. especially yeah to, like fuck around with it you get a better like idea of what you would need when you're doing it professionally in the future mm-hmm I guess it's like funny because a lot of the, a lot of the fucking shit that I made were, it was basically like as violent as like the movie we watched. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> just like people like shooting. It. It's just like gunfights and, but with like Nerf guns and mm. all that yeah. shit. It was like Everything really. Young boys like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fake muzzle flashes you add in. Do these exist anywhere or are they like too embarrassing to have on YouTube? They do not okay. Just uh, curious. exist online anywhere. <laughs> I yeah, they're 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 probably too embarrassing. I did do one when I <laughs> when I was filming Moonrise. I did uh me and a couple of the uh my friends who who played like the khaki scouts. We just like ran around our hotel hallway with like nerf guns <laughs> and like toy guns that I had won at like a nearby arcade. Like you have to That's understand awesome. when I was filming that movie, I was still very much a kid. Oh yeah. I was still like going to like the arcade every weekend and like listening to dubstep on set. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> get into the character. Yeah. <laughs> what I will say is that I was prepped for the movie. Wes did like have Kara and me kind of get tested with like the script memorization I had to learn how to kayak oh, nice. uh, for just that one shot. <laughs> in, awesome. uh, in terms of like acting prep that Wes had us do, he had me watch a Clint Eastwood movie Escape from Alcatraz. Oh, nice. And then he also had us, uh, had Karen and I actually like mail each other the letters that the characters oh. do in the movie. That's awesome. All the handwriting you see in the movie, that is my handwriting. He had me do that like a quite a few times. That's probably good. the best it'll ever look. <laughs> you, you've mentioned, I guess, looking back on, I guess, the experience of filming Moonrise Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what what are your thoughts when you look back at, I guess, your performance? Like, how, how critical are you of your past self? I'm just curious about I, that. Yeah, uh, 
I would say that, like, as I got older, I got more self-conscious. Mm-hmm. And then also interviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the press interviews <laughs> yeah. uh, that I did. I had difficulty watching those back, just because I, I, you know, at that point, I was, like, 13, and I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, like yeah. <laughs> just, like, also because of the nature of it, too, because, like, it's a lot of, you know, you're sitting in a chair, and you're watching a rotating line of uh, media people, like, interviewing, asking kind of the same questions yeah. over and over and over yeah. again so mm-hmm. i did have a, a session before i did any of the press stuff uh where like i uh did have a little bit of like training in terms of like ways i guess like nicer ways of <laughs> answering certain questions or mm-hmm. just like ways that are just like just like basic kind of like etiquette tips and stuff like that okay and so i went back to, to school and like friends you know sometimes would like jokingly pull up uh interviews and stuff and i'd like start cringing you you posted on twitter that you got interviewed by flavor flav and i tried finding that on youtube oh. and i couldn't find it <laughs> yeah it's is that anywhere where... that i could watch it i don't know hilarious. i don't know oh so where man. do you have the screenshot yeah, no. from you just had that if you go on safari and you just like google uh flavor flavor flav 2013 mtv movie awards okay one of the links it's it's a video it's literally a super cut of <laughs> Him just saying "Wow" uh, on the red carpet. So there are a couple of shots where he's saying "Wow" uh, to me. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, the full context uh, that I can tell you about is that that fucking red carpet was insane. Yeah. Just yeah, in terms yeah. of like the media people that were there, and just like again, remember eight years ago or whatever, however long, and I was like fourteen at the time. So like that whole red carpet was like insane because it was like everyone like I I just watched you know. In movies that year, Flava Flav was there. Snooki was on the red carpet doing interviews. Oh yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> and I remember at one point they had me sat down next to Seth Rogen. Nice for part of it, <laughs> so which was interesting because like at that point I hadn't watched all of his films yet because I was still fourteen and, and I was somewhat following the rules, I guess, when it came to to certain raunchy movies. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. He had to go and do like a bit where uh he was like on stage in between like the awards and like he dropped his pants or whatever and like m- mooned the audience uh and then afterwards uh like ran i ran into him on my way out uh, it was him and danny mcbride <laughs> and uh you know uh and seth rogan like leans over and he's like hey sorry you had to see my ass there <laughs> uh, sorry <laughs> like hey it's okay it's all for comedy don't worry <laughs> Uh, Alex or Ralph, did you have any? Uh... Yeah, I just wanted to ask you something quick. Sure. If you had any advice to like young actors who might find themselves in your position, going to film school, or even or even being in a lead in a movie, <laughs> being so young. I mean, I think just because of the nature of this year and everything that's happened, mm-hmm. I guess. Okay, well, all right. What kind of like what sort of advice? Like what like? It, oh, I, I was asking like, general to, advice. I don't know. Like just general well, advice. Being so young. Like, I guess I can imagine there's a lot of pressure. Like this is your first film, and there was so much riding on your performance, and to be so good. So I, I don't know. I could I can imagine yeah. other young actors would find themselves in a similar position. So if you had any advice for them, I'm oh, sure like, you could offer like general a lot. acting. Yeah, general acting. Oh god. And I directing mean, too. I mean, just working with S- Wes Anderson, you know a lot about sure, directing. Sure. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a lot. It's, How did you yeah, it's, it's it's such it's such it's like. Because the thing is, it's like it's so it's such a per- it's such a personal thing that like mm-hmm. I don't know if I had to give acting advice, maybe trust trust the material or like I don't know I don't know I'm admittedly not the biggest advice giver uh, <laughs> right now. Sure. So I do apologize I just, for not I, having. Much I do an think you this. have a lot to offer in answering that. And Alex, if you want to ask yours, and then we could come back. Yeah, yeah, we can come <laughs> yeah back too. that's uh, fine too. <laughs> But yeah, I was I was going to ask about some of your movie tastes before sure. we go into speaking about uh, Ricky. Ricky, um, do you have any recent favorites from the last couple of years, or just all time favorites? It's a difficult question, but okay. So like uh, like last year, favorite films were like Uncut Gems, Parasite, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Irishman. I guess also I should admit, having lived in the city, I was going to uh, like New York Film Festival uh, oh, yeah. every fall. And so, like, I was seeing a lot of these movies, like, there uh, for the first time. And I got to see, like, you know, Uncut Gems and, like, The Irishman and and uh, all the films I just mentioned, like, on the big screen, which was, like, insane at the time. Mm-hmm. That was, like, one of the things that I, I really loved about living in the city was, like, just being, was the mobility of just, like, 
thinking, oh shit, I want to go see this random ass action movie, and then yeah. like walk better a few selection blocks and... in the city. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite director? Oh, I'm really bad at favorites. Uh, okay. I mean, you know, I'm I'm very much into a lot of the same filmmakers that I think we're all into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neil Breen. Yes, Neil Breen. Uh, mm-hmm. Tommy Wiseau. You know, um, Spike Jones, Charlie Kaufman, Edgar Wright. Uh, nice. Bong Joon Ho, Park Chan Wook. Who else? Uh, Safties. They're great. You sound like you listen to Sardonicast. I, yeah. I do actually <laughs> listen to you guys. Uh, <laughs> I was I wanted to say something at the top of the episode, but like mm-hmm. uh, I just kept going. And but yeah, I do yeah. actually. I, I like kind of grew up listening, like watching you guys' channels. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> we're taking over. When I say I was fourteen, it was like right before Adam. It was like right before I started watching uh, your channel. Crazy. Yeah, and then I guess Ralph and Alex. Yeah, that was like I must have been like seven, sixteen, seventeen around then. Wow. I think. Well, I just want to apologize for poisoning your mind. <laughs> so yeah. Me. yeah, dude. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Me. I've gone to film school. It's fine. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. I guess it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Do you have like a favorite genre or style that you want to work in yourself that defines your taste? In terms of like the ideas that have been like percolating in my head these last several years, genre wise, they've like skewed in like the like dark comedy mm-hmm. route uh i know okay, cool. ari aster said his next film was a nightmare comedy yeah and i feel like that's a genre that uh a genre label that i feel like i'm at way too early of a point to kind of like pin myself down anywhere and then too it's like i also want to see what's going to happen in terms of like the state of productions and like all that moving forward I, I i'm just very 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 uh curious to see uh what happens in the next you know, yeah. several months. I, think mm-hmm. we all are. I guess before we move on to the next uh, part of the discussion, I guess, did you want to go back to that? Uh, did you have any thought to give on like general advice? It doesn't even need to necessarily be on like acting specifically, but like, I don't know, mindset or like what to expect or prepare sure. for. Sure. I, I want to say like have an open mind or like just sort of like don't take anything personally or just don't mm-hmm. like, you know, don't. Don't be a dick. <laughs> know that like you're sort of venturing in a very spiky territory but it's not like just because there are spikes it is bad i know my experience and my mm-hmm. experience was i did moonrise and then i did some other films uh and worked with a lot of really really great people i'm not like uh you know someone who's been through like the hollywood system or like yeah. the, the sort of like like that kind of side of it almost it's sort of just yeah <laughs> not just like indie films but but non-existent films yeah uh <laughs> films <laughs> never get released or <laughs> i mean that are yeah i mean I, i'm not really sure what happened with them <laughs> that uh, that's actually a phenomenon that films do you get shot and then edited and then change their mind nothing <laughs> in a way i feel like you know it did maybe turn me into someone who you know i am very much i don't i don't consider myself pessimistic but i feel like sometimes like i'm with other people and i'll say things and then i don't know maybe i'm too strongly worded or whatever but like i i, I guess like you know, it's like I, I don't believe it until I see it, mm-hmm. or until you're I'm just there, until you're more like... cautious and more experienced in in this. I guess, I guess in a way, yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. Yeah, I I'm always happy to work. I'm always like super pumped to go on set and like do scenes and and you know work with other actors and mm-hmm. director and everyone. But you know, I'm always in the back of my head like keeping my fingers crossed that everything is like <laughs> gonna go okay because you know? <laughs> yeah because that's just you know the, the the production life is that it, you know it's all very unpredictable mm-hmm. uh, the nature of it is that it, it can be very unpredictable sometimes so you know everything goes super fine and smooth and everyone's happy and it's great other times you know because you got super harsh deadlines and sometimes can get heated and all that but you know it's all for making movies yeah it's all for the <laughs> yeah, art which is awesome and i'm just only really talking about like my experiences but yeah awesome that's all really insightful yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> glad, that, glad that that uh, was insightful <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so there's some uh there's some movie news that uh i guess we won't talk about for too long but i just kind of wanted to mention 
Avatar is delayed again. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The, well, the oh, second one. It. I guess all the sequels are also delayed now. Everything is delayed. <laughs> we mentioned the, the same thing happening with Tenet in the last episode, but I think that there's a bit different context to this in particular because the whole point of Avatar is that it's... The selling point is that it's supposed to look like crazy new technology. And I'm just worried, like, mm-hmm. if, if it's being delayed... What is it now? Two years? It was supposed to originally come out in, like, 2020 or something? Like, is it still going to be as groundbreaking visually or i don't know surely there has to be more to the plan though if they're planning how many three or four of them if there's one a year there's got to be more yeah, to it than just like pretty 20 visuals. more avatar sequels yeah. or some shit i guess it really just depends on like what the overarching narrative thread is and like what yeah what he's even like thinking about story-wise he said that like they were planning on it being underwater, if I'm remembering correctly. Like, That's right. Yeah. I feel like I heard that somewhere, and uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's like a very James Cameron thing to do. Yeah, he loves the ocean, so. Do you think it's gonna work out for them? Because uh, people are like already writing it off, but yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> like the yeah, amount, just the pure no amount idea. of money and resources that have already put, been put in. I'm too curious. I'm yeah, that's, gonna yeah. watch those movies no matter what. I think everybody's curious. I think I think that yeah. can sum up the the general experience of people <laughs> when looking forward to this movie. It's just curious. He's interesting enough to me that like I'm still gonna watch like anything that he comes mm-hmm. out with. He's got some level of faith in it, surely. <laughs> yeah, I mean it could, you know, you're right. It could totally turn out to be like really monotonous. I mean, We'll see, I guess. I, I'm not expecting a masterpiece. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's going to be a big, gigantic Hollywood mm-hmm. movie, so it's probably going to have a certain level of, like, bombast and, like, a certain level of, like... And scope, yeah. And scope is what I'm imagining, and uh, it's probably going to look... It just, I think what's what the real question is, is, like, is it going to get to a point where, like, CG is just, you know, so photorealistic that... Like, how far are we going to be able to sort yeah. of, are, are you going to be able to push the sort of spectacle aspect of, like, CG quality in, like, the next few years? That's kind of what well, I'm yeah. wondering. Since the first yeah. one, think about the amount of cinematic spectacle we've seen. When did mm-hmm. Avatar come out? 2007? Nine. Like yeah. 2009. 2009. Yeah, so that's over a decade worth of, like, CG tech and visual effects. Mm-hmm. And, like, I haven't watched it in a while, but last time I saw it, I was in my high school... <laughs> High school astrophysics class, <laughs> uh, <laughs> senior year. So it was 2017, so a couple of years, few years ago. And like even then, the Navi looked good. Some of the explosions, you know, you could tell. It was like 2009. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. CG gets dated inevitably. The Lion King 2019 right. has parts that look dated right now. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has anybody seen the uh, YouTube video from Jack's Films called Can Anyone Name a Single Character from the Movie Avatar? And he basically, <laughs> yeah. yeah, him and uh, Internet Comment Etiquette and uh, Brock Baker, they run around interviewing people just being like, have you seen Avatar? Yes. Can you name a single character? And nobody can. <laughs> no it's one. like a 10 minute long video, which like is Jake? a great video to make. Jake I Sully. Think. Is it Jake Sully? Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Jake Sully. Yeah, that's the one the I remember. I'm oh, shocked that, that any of you can remember characters' names from that movie, because I can't. <laughs> who was the general? I remember something really yeah, on the who, nose. what's his name? General... Uh, Stephen Lang's character, right? Yeah. General Grievous. General <laughs> yeah, it was Grievous. like that. <laughs> general Meanie. Here, wait, I'll, look here. I'll just pull it up on my phone real quick. Major Pain. Uh... <laughs> oh, it's... <laughs> what is it? Miles Quaritch. <laughs> Quaritch. Mm. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, I I'll be watching the first Avatar for the second time <laughs> right before the second one comes out. Pretty much, it's just it's been so long, and I've never felt obligated to watch it for a second time. I'll only just do that just to catch myself back up. And I don't remember. Like, I, I didn't have a bad experience watching <laughs> yeah. it. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it's it, it's like a pretty like cut and dry story. Like, Pocahontas. it's just that it's like a three hour movie. Uh-huh. It's a classic <laughs> mm-hmm. tale. Yeah. I think an Avatar 2 would do well. I don't know about Avatar 5 and yeah. Avatar 10. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. to, wait. to invest in. Yeah, it's a lot in. to ask of people. Yeah, it's a lot to invest in, right? Yeah. If Avatar 2 bombs, so, that would be like the most insane thing on the planet. Because then it's like, what do you do with the other yeah. one? I don't, <laughs> I don't think it I don't will think bomb. It yeah. I think enough yeah. people no. are. I have a lot of that Disney money that it will do now. well. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it could do the, the sort of DC thing of like having a really big opening weekend and then kind of dropping off. Yeah, maybe. That's yeah, if people don't like it. Yeah, yeah, if it's not good and the curiosity wins, yeah. With these franchises, I think the issue is like they don't have someone with a clear vision that's a, mm-hmm. like good, like James Cameron, who can just steer the project and he knows what he's doing. I think a lot of these kind of fall apart, like DC or like a Star Wars kind of. Like people mm-hmm. lose interest because there's like a bunch of creative people and they're all like doing their own thing with it. You have like Mandalorian on this side and then you yeah. have Rogue One and then you like have like saturated like, The Last Jedi. Yeah, it's like very different tones. And I think people are like kind of they get sick of it. Yeah, Disney has made mistakes before. They were going to make that solo Star Wars movie into a trilogy and then they were like, nope. <laughs> I think James Cameron's a bit smarter than that. Yeah. He could tell a story at least, I think. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, just wanted to mention that anyway. If there's other crazy <laughs> yeah, cool story. movie news that we didn't talk about, it's because we recorded this episode right. earlier than usual. It hasn't happened oh, yet yeah, for I mean, us. I guess the uh, only other news I can think about is just like the fact that like everything is now delayed. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's basically <laughs> just everything's delayed, except Netflix. Everything that was planned to have a theatrical release, uh, except for like Bill and Ted 3. Yeah. <laughs> Bill and Ted 3. Keanu's big right now. I'm sure it'll do yeah. well. Yeah, it's like, on mm-hmm. <laughs> Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, John Wick. So like you know, it, it's it's gonna be like you know, it's not gonna be like a masterpiece. But How do you know? Be, it'll be a good time, hopefully. It could be a masterpiece. <laughs> I hope it is. Uh, <laughs> it won't be. <laughs> Did we talk about the Morbius trailer? That <laughs> came out that? so long ago, and I had that on my. It came out so well long ago, like but I watched ago. it, and and Michael Keaton shows up at the end. Oh yeah, which oh, means it's like tied in with Venom. Ah, I'm glad you brought this up, actually. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to dodge. I'm not trying to dodge the bet here. <laughs> okay. Because I, I think but, I think you owe me. <laughs> so, for, so for the, from from memory, because this is a while ago now, yeah. from whenever Venom yeah. came out, the the bet was Venom would be in the MCU, right? Yeah, we'll have to go been. back again. It's it's going back. <laughs> Somebody has to click someone somewhere. on the Reddit. Wall. We need the full clip. Yeah. So, so does this Morbius trailer <laughs> confirm that Venom is in the MCU? <laughs> Tom Hardy's Venom. I think it does. Really? Because if it know. does, if if we can get some, uh, you know, if someone can check this and guarantee yeah. it. Uh, someone double you know, check. Uh, we need a ref or something. Yeah, somebody like post a, on the subreddit. Objective third party. And Reddit's pretty good. Or like in the in like the general MC, like with all the Avengers and all that. See, this is what I mean, because I, I don't believe that Marvel would let that movie like exist in the MCU. <laughs> like the- That's my like whole... <laughs> Yeah, the Tom Hardy. I think the standards are too high. Yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. Well, because it was also that was a Sony one, right? Yeah. yeah, that was Sony. So yeah, I don't think that they would consider it. You never know. Yeah, it might not be. But but like Michael Keaton is in, so that Ma- means it's like yeah, the Michael same Keaton's character. In it. Yeah, so they're connected by that. I don't yeah. even remember who Michael Keaton played in Venom. He wasn't in Venom. He was in Spider Man. Oh. oh, but that's different than the. He was uh, the bad. The guy. Birdman. Mm-hmm. The yeah, other so you see man. my confusion. They're, they're like teetering on the edge of making it but a reality. That's, that's not the Venom yeah. movie, though. It's Morbius, which is made no, by Sony. No, but if Morbius right? is in the Venom universe, then yeah. perhaps. But Michael Keaton's by, not like... necessarily in the Venom universe, is he? He's in a he is. different Spider Man movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> Michael it's, Keaton it's, wasn't it's, in it's, Venom. He shows up like, as, as the same character. <laughs> You're trying to explain the unexplainable. <laughs> Michael this, Keaton this was in this thing has to end. The, the, the yeah, it's it's getting a Tom little Tom Holland now. Spider-Man, but Venom was not in that. So we don't even know if those are the same universe because Spider-Man was never in the Venom movie. No, well, Spider-Man is not the Venom the, movie. The reason um, Michael Keaton's in that in Morbius, I think, was that it was Sony's terms. Because remember that thing that happened with Spider-Man where he was like out of the MCU for a bit. I think mm-hmm. in their negotiations to come up with a new contract, mm-hmm. they were like they agreed to use like side characters from yeah. the MCU, like that one Birdman or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Michael Keaton's character, right? Yeah, I have no idea. But I'll pay so... up the second I I see some proof. Yeah, right. <laughs> we might have to wait for the movie to come out, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carnage. <laughs> I was, I it was worth it. bringing. What, up. Was it fifty bucks? It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's great. I love that this just keeps going. I know, it's going to be it's like an gonna ongoing end. thing. Yeah, it's never going to end. Okay, we can start it's the movie discussion now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ricky, oh. Nail-biting drama. All right, so <laughs> there was a movie recommended last episode, and uh, it's a uh, spoiler discussion. It's Ricky O, oh, the story of Ricky. It is a uh, Hong Kong kung fu kind of, like martial arts movie. 
you debatably but not really it's not really it almost like it it's has like the same tone it's like a prison fight yeah Violent it's like it's like the raid comedy too. but not <laughs> At all, <laughs> it's, well, its, it's own like, thing. It's like a, a violent rip em up, yeah. punch em up, a, a mm -hmm. very gory, fun <laughs> film. It is like the raid or like the raid two, the prison part. If yeah. the violence was really funny, yeah. If it was, it was just like over the top, Looney Tunes yeah. Comedy, yeah. Five, yeah. And it is hysterical. Did you guys watch the uh, subbed or dubbed? Dubbed. Dub. Yeah. Okay. I watched same. subbed, and then I read on the wiki that the dub was hilarious, and then kind of regretted it. Yeah, that's why I, I watched did the, the same dub. as you, Adam. <laughs> yeah. The dub is on Tubi. Okay. Oh. Because the dub is on Amazon Prime. Or it's oh, yeah? like rentable on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I, I watched it on Blu Tubi because it was free. So I just watched it oh, in cool. yeah. the original language. So So how was the dub then, for those of you that watched the dub? Um, I thought the dubbing was very good. The what voice do you mean actors by that? did a great job. In that it, it's uh, a little more comedic in tone with mm -hmm. the dub, mm -hmm. but I think that adds to the experience. Okay. I don't think that takes away from it. If it was a more serious film, then yeah, I could see why. Mm -hmm. um, it works either way, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it does put a different kind of spin on like the humor. I rewatched some like clips on YouTube, and the clips were subtitled. So like, uh, I got to see when what's his name gets his chest like caved in and then <laughs> ripped open. <laughs> the humor is still there, subbed or dubbed. It's just that There's, it's like yeah. I feel like with like the another layer, subbed, yeah. it's a little drier. Yeah. It, it was an interesting tone for this with the sub for sure, but there were parts in the movie where I was like, okay, that's definitely 100% supposed to be funny. Like that, that's, mm -hmm. that's definitely going for laughs there. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's definitely a comedy. Yeah. The, the guys keep saying, uh, you bastard, you bastard, I'll get you, you bastard. <laughs> oh, right. It's really funny in the dub. <laughs> like I can't imagine that same thing. So the plot of this film is that this is a dystopian future where capitalistic companies have privatized everything and <laughs> i'm not i'm not sure exactly how much that comes into play in the film but that was the opening title and uh ricky is he's got like five bullets in his chest because some mob boss like indirectly killed his girlfriend and sh she jumped off a roof in very very comical way and then he's in jail and he discovers some opium stuff going on and fights a bunch of people and everybody gets hurt and dies in gory ways pretty much <laughs> that's the basic gist yeah. of it yeah it's just nuts from there yeah it's basically a superhero movie speaking yeah. of them he's like super powered he can do crazy things like punch through people cut their heads off <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like that violence. mixed with like a fighting movie kind of you know training montage and, and learning the new martial art mm -hmm. yeah training in a graveyard at night with a bunch of fog yeah yeah it's, it's yeah. super cartoony um and the whole way through i kept thinking yeah. this is really like a comic book and it makes sense because it's mm -hmm. based on a manga yeah i didn't know that until so. after oh okay yeah i didn't know yeah. Until yeah, that makes after. a lot of sense he can yeah. take a, a lot of beatings <laughs> he gets beat up a lot in this movie which yeah. is why it reminded me of like the Looney Tunes thing. The the part where the, the prisoner puts the razor blades in his mouth and then they duct Love tape it. it and starts hitting him. Like that was hysterical. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that character, by the way, it's it's a male character in a male prison, but the actor's played by a woman. It, okay, Yukari that's... Oshima is her mm -hmm. name. All right. <laughs> yeah, but that was just, it was such an interesting like uh, choice. Yeah. Like for, for that time and like in the movie, sure. it was just something I noticed. I was like, oh, that was cool. Mm -hmm. I think in it's Rogan in the dub, and then Huang yeah. Chong in the subtitled one. Uh -huh. The fake blood in this looked like it just the color of it and the consistency. Yeah. It didn't look fake. It looked really good, even though the effects are like yeah. really goofy. Like the mm -hmm. the the gore was really effective, and I guess it's because it's shot on film too that added to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, it was just awesome. It was just an awesome fucking movie yeah. to watch because <laughs> of that. That. And like the cutting, I thought like the the cutting during like the fights was really like spot yeah. on. I thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they showed just enough. It was mm -hmm. quick, but it was all you know very very punchy. And like the shots were very clear that they sell what the effect that they're going you know in general you know it's cheesy and you get that it's like an effect, but it's like you're still getting a reaction out of it. You mm -hmm. know, it's yeah. like still like oh yeah, I wasn't expecting <laughs> to enjoy the practical effects this much. I knew mm -hmm. it was like supposed to be like kind of goofy, campy, over the top stuff. And so yeah. walking into something like that, I'm expecting more of a like trauma Lloyd Kaufman kind of approach when it comes mm. to, <laughs> to, I guess, the overall effects. But they actually put a lot of yeah. effort into it. There was some there were some really yeah. creative, uh, I guess, gags in terms of uh, ways that people died and just like 
<laughs> really disturbing okay. concepts for yeah. for violence. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's also funny. It's it, like, just so over the top. Yeah. There's really goofy yeah. effects, like the big rubber man at the end. That like that looked really bad. Oh, yeah. But and when, especially when Ricky was just holding his head, like at the end. Well, then there's that part where he gets eventually thrown into the meat grinder, <laughs> and you see the wire <laughs> on him. Very, yeah, like the that was such a shot. good scene. <laughs> it's it was awesome. so like pulpy and poppy. It was so uh -huh. so much fun. All these silly. Is that how how's he gonna get out of this one then? That, that's <laughs> yeah. basically what the hook of the movie is. Like, what's, what's he gonna do next? How's he gonna yeah. get revenge next? Because it kept like building up, like. <laughs> Just yeah. new people to get revenge on again and again. Yeah. <laughs> like when he gets hilarious. blinded uh, during that one fight, and then he has yeah. to break the like water, <laughs> yeah, or whatever, and then like wash his ass out. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, very silly. <laughs> that scene where he screams in the rain. It oh, was yeah. one of my favorite in the movie. That <laughs> oh. really got me. That was the moment I was like, okay, I that get what this incredible. thing's going for now. I wanted to like edit in that like eighties like montage song where, like yes. the maniac maniac just like in that scene yeah. just like anger in the rain felt very Such reminiscent of that kind of it. thing uh who here has seen uh peter jackson's dead alive or brain dead depending on yeah. which uh yeah. yeah yeah all of us i i haven't actually you have uh, not ooh. no Oh. That's a gory movie. Yeah, that is a gory movie. That is yeah. holy shit. I mean, Ricky O's is gorier than Ricky O's its own thing. Dead Alive, holy shit! Right. I love Dead Alive. I don't think I've actually. That might be the goriest movie I've seen. Right? I would of, have like, when to it comes to, like, say that yeah. the scale of like the practical effects and the gore work in that movie. In second place, maybe being like Evil Dead. I, yeah, like, I would say I would say Dead Alive is mm. more gory than Evil Dead, honestly. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying is like yeah. Dead Alive and then Evil Dead, yeah, okay. like in terms of like the ordering. But yeah, that was a great movie. I, I kind of would like to have another really, really violent, over the top Peter Jackson movie. That would be like yeah, really awesome. yeah, <laughs> yeah. With like Sam Raimi and how he made like uh, Drag Me to Hell after so many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want Peter yeah. Jackson to go back to his roots and, <laughs> and make one of those. Yeah, so when it comes to this movie, it's uh, there's a lot about it that's incredibly tropey but i don't even care oh yeah in like a different movie it might bother me a bit more but it's just so cheesy and just so like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it adds to the experience in a way whether or not it's like intentional in every in every sense there's so much about it like the uh the villain character not the warden but the the guy with <laughs> the, the, the eyeball assistant warden yeah he keeps his mints <laughs> in his eye Yep. <laughs> Which is like the worst place to keep mints. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so that would be, you get so that like menthol floor. burn in your eye socket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got mints for brains. Pretty much. I loved the uh, the warden's son. That yeah. character yeah. That was, a funny was so oh, like funny. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like probably in his 20s or something. I don't know how old yeah. the, the actor was, but <laughs> he was like doing a, doing a Martin Short Clifford thing. <laughs> Just gets out of the car, goes in the red carpet, trips, and then immediately the one's like, who rolled the carpet? <laughs> so where do you think the balance is on the laughing with it versus laughing at it type thing? Because I was surprised with how much I was laughing with it. Yeah. Like a, it seemed fairly self-aware. It's like an 80-20 yeah ratio yeah somewhere in that ballpark mm -hmm. it's the only tone you can really like commit to to sell something like this it is so mm -hmm. ridiculous yeah. i mostly appreciated it because it was well done so exactly you yeah know, i yeah. really wasn't laughing at it i'm like it's this is just the tone of it it just yeah. works as it is it's an over-the-top fucking crazy movie <laughs> mm -hmm. and it works mm -hmm. within this universe everything within the movie is like fine i don't think anything yeah. happened that wouldn't like happen in that movie's universe you know yeah yeah it very much does exactly what it sets out to do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It was surprisingly ambitious for a movie that was basically, I mean, like, mostly just one location, too. <laughs> a lot yeah. of things yeah. happened. I, I like the bottle feel of it, too. Yeah. Kind of had a good build, too, like, where, you know, in terms of, like, the structure and, like, the frequency of the action, first 20 or so minutes are a little light, but you get some great scenes, and then, like, after a certain point, it's just, like, fights. <laughs> it's like great yeah this is non-stop chaos <laughs> yeah and that way it almost reminded me of like scott pilgrim with that build up of like Kinda, his characters yeah. going one by one and then mm. there being like an action fight or something the yeah. gang of four instead of the seven evil mm -hmm. exes <laughs> yeah, yeah basically <laughs> and the raid kind of does that too there's like these henchmen characters that come in i guess more in the mm. second one 
But yeah. That reminded me of that. These like yeah. one has a hammer and then one has a bat. It's like that. I like the guy with the hook. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. And then and then the whole like stab through the desk thing and break the desk. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> that whole fucking thing. <laughs> it's like we could we could just have an entire discussion just talking about each one of the practical <laughs> yeah. effects. Just that how happen. funny it is. Basically. Oh yeah, when he, he gets like cut in his arm and he's got to like re yeah, he like ties his tendon back uh-huh. together. I'm like, that doesn't make <laughs> yeah, sense. Yeah, that was <laughs> gross. It's <was, laughs> like fucking gross. To that has to be for laughs, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a gross out and a like a laugh moment too. Yeah, and then also when he's fighting the guy and he uh, when again after he uh, unblinds himself and his opponent then forms like seppuku. Yeah, uh, and then like wraps his intestines around oh, yeah. uh, Ricky <laughs> and the uh, yeah. assistant warden <laughs> has the amazing line. I got a lot of guts, Oscar. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how faithful to the manga it is. Yeah, I was reading. Apparently, some people have a criticism for this movie. Mm-hmm. That being, why does Ricky not just use his powers to escape right at the beginning? Because apparently in the manga he has an actual reason, which I read oh, okay. up. Okay. Um, it's just, yeah, it's oh. very silly. Like okay. he doesn't yeah. want to. He just find punches out the wall info. at the end, and they show it like three times in a row. That was actually good editing. And then you he see the wires as the pieces yet. or like yeah, yeah. The, of the wall are pulled back. <laughs> yeah. He wanted yeah. to he, to expose the opium hijinks first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I if know. that's what bothers <laughs> so, you about yeah. the movie, if that's your takeaway, yeah. it's like I, I can't. You kind of miss the it. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the I mean, there's there's things that yeah. make less sense than that. There's also a sequel, or allegedly, there's a sequel. Yeah, I, I just mm. wanted to mention that too. It's like an unofficial, or he's yeah, not, unofficial. He's playing Ricky, but it's not Ricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a different name, but it's the same actor, and it's like a completely different story. It's set like way after. It's not really in a prison. I don't think. Yeah. It's I was like looking it up. Thing. Apparently it exists on DVD in Hong Kong, but without English subtitles. So who knows? There might be like a fan yeah. sub or something somewhere. I have no idea. They didn't release it in America. So yeah, yeah. I can't even see it. There were, um, I mean, I can't even say that these things really bothered me, but just things <laughs> that I noticed that were like, that's probably not intentional. Just like the, uh, the warden and how his head is like shaved instead of like his his head is shaved for male pattern baldness like you can tell that there's like <laughs> you know you, you can see like oh, the right. different colored like like a five o'clock shadow on top of his head yeah even though he's you can see to... like his hair growing back <laughs> <laughs> you could just like paint okay. over that or something give him a bald cap it's probably better yeah you'd think with how how well they do all of the gore effects they'd be able to put on yeah, a little makeup a bald cap. on his head <laughs> There were a couple Kool Aid Man moments, bursting through the wall. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love those. Uh, those are the best parts. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I was a fan of the the boss upgrade at the end of the warden. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being revealed to be a also to be a master of the the martial art that he's been studying this whole time. Yeah, yeah, it was such a video game moment. And then like the reincorporation of the one line about it being about what was it like? It's a strength based <laughs> fighting style where like it's like each punch makes you stronger. Mm. Conceptually, you can definitely do a lot with that. It is, you know, I guess it is a shame it's only got that one pseudo sequel. Mm-hmm. That there wasn't a whole Ricky universe. <laughs> yeah, there should have been more. We it need has, like, Ricky a cult following three. Now. Maybe they can remake it. Directed by uh, the guy who directed the Raid movies. Yeah. I think he'd be yeah. a good fit. Gareth, I mean, he yeah, hasn't Gareth really done Evans. comedy, but yeah, he should fucking do it. <laughs> no, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So did you have any uh, favorite lines from the film? I've got a couple written down. I don't know if they were in the dub or not, but they were this way in the sub. Mm-hmm. There was uh, the punch hurts even without touching me, which just felt very reminiscent to like <laughs> Black Dynamite in a way. <laughs> it was like, this is so goofy and over the top. Yeah. And then there's the uh, the guy singing like from the bathroom, and he's singing something like "A Playboy goes to the toilet without knowing whether he needs to or not." Oh, like, it was a little was different in the dub. Okay. It's a bit different in the dub. It's a different song. He's like singing like it got no satisfaction or something. But <laughs> yeah, right. he's singing like a Rolling Stones <laughs> song. That was hysterical. That was actually one of the funniest parts of the movie. He's like, yeah, I guess I'll trying. have to watch the other version. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, wait, did he not take a shit? <laughs> I'm so glad you remembered that because I was wondering, like, uh, I wonder what that is in the other version. Okay, I, yeah. I never checked it. 
Yeah, yeah no, because I, I, that moment stuck out to me too when I was watching uh-huh. it again. <laughs> it's perfect. I love the flute scene. I love I love the cheesy <laughs> sound effects for the flute, and I love yeah. seeing the guy like run away so happy, like dancing along, like playing the flute right after. Mm-hmm. It's so cheesy and so good. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. a it's a really good watch with friends drunk movie, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although that's not what yeah. I did, but <laughs> I can I can imagine. It fits that bad for sure. Yeah, there okay. isn't. Uh, well, I guess what else we got? I mean, I I kind of anticipated that this would this discussion wouldn't have. I mean, like, what are we going to talk about? Like movie, the it? themes. <laughs> like, what are we going to talk about here? Like, uh, well, there are themes. It's like a. It's very like anti, like you know, the man is fighting you, keeping you mm-hmm. locked down, and trying to keep you in your cell. You gotta f- fight the power and break out and be like Ricky, just fucking kill everyone and <laughs> be free. Yeah, just <laughs> kill everyone. Out and just fight, yeah, punch fight everyone in the face. Yeah, it's a symbol of strength, like what every person wants. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I see Ricky as. That's why I love the character. Yeah, it's also a pretty yeah. good Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> yeah. Some of the shots are like direct. Oh yeah, pretty like, much. They're yeah. just animations it's from the awesome. game. They're just much. like fatalities. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. With the de- yeah, they're basically yeah, you're right. They're basically fatalities. Yeah. <laughs> they're working on a Mortal Kombat movie now. They got to watch this and they got to take notes from this yeah. and they got to top it too because this is really impressive and really creative yeah. too. Like not just the effects work. Like the stuff they come up with is really funny. I'd hope you're somewhat familiar with uh, with this uh, with this film. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because I feel like I had heard about it before. Because, like, the, the whole, like, fight scene with the... When, you know, he takes his intestines out. That was, like, a... I feel like that was, like, a whole... That was, like, a viral clip for a while on YouTube. Yeah, that seemed familiar. Yeah. There was, like, a video. It was, like, the goriest fight ever in a movie or whatever. And it's, like, from 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah. I, I knew yeah. there were things I recognized about it. Because, yeah, it definitely felt like one of those type of movies. Really fucking solid movie. <laughs> yeah. Very I guess it gained that cult, that cult following through like YouTube clips, and that makes so much sense. Like someone would upload like a 360p yeah. YouTube <laughs> clip of it like yeah. 10 years ago. People were like, this is fucking awesome. What is this movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. It has like an audience in America and all over the world, I guess. I want more movies like this. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure there are. I'm sure there's tons. But this even feels like, even for a Hong Kong movie, which a lot of them are very over the top, this feels stand out, I think. Mm-hmm. Because of how creative and funny it is, it's very unique. And they commit, they yeah, don't hold they back commit. at all. Mm-hmm. It is really yeah. well done, and the, even the cheesy moments work. They're they're very genuine and funny too. Mm-hmm. Or the the flashbacks mm-hmm. with his girlfriend, like in the field or whatever they're doing. Oh, yeah. You know, they're running yeah. around with the RC <laughs> like helicopters. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her death was very uh, sudden and like it, the, that. It was hilarious. The running. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. In, I guess if I had like any kind of critique of it it's just maybe that element like in terms of the emotional aspect of it even though it's not really like one of those movies I yeah guess. but like it seemed like it was almost trying but I, I don't know maybe i'm reading it they were trying to up the stakes yeah back in the early 90s depending on the audience you know there might be parts of the movie that some people are able to take unironically but to me it's you know, the whole thing is just super goofy, so I can't... Yeah, yeah. And it's not really... It's not a movie that, that needs that kind of emotional engagement mm-hmm. for it to sort of work. Yeah. The characters don't have to be, like, relatable, realistic yeah. people. They're all cartoon characters. Yeah, as long as they're, like, well-defined enough to sort yeah. of be they're, they're well-defined and they represent something, yeah. Yeah, they do just enough. At the beginning of the movie, it's, like, so clear what it's going for. They, like, throw the old dude... And then there's this like synchronized movement between oh, the yeah. two guys. They like clap their hands together and then high five and then peace sign at the camera and smile. I was like, yeah. yes, <laughs> this is it. This is exactly what I want. <laughs> I love the, uh, I don't know what, the, I, I don't know if this was the same line in the dub or not, but the big guy, he says that he, he was offered 30 kilograms of rice to kill Ricky. <laughs> and that's why he's doing it. <laughs> yeah. So many good, hilarious, over the top gore effects. That's like, but the majority of my notes is just listing off each, <laughs> each one of those. I yeah. even liked like some of the non-gore kind of set pieces, like when mm-hmm. he was buried. Yeah, and that just the way they presented that was a lot of fun. Yeah, like kicked a dog in half. I also just enjoyed like the prisoners' sort of commentary on whatever was going on, mm-hmm. like on the action, because like they all love Ricky, but then like they have to like participate in the burial. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're all like, they all feel really bad, and then afterwards they're just like, oh, shit, what do we do? <laughs> they're all, like, trying to <laughs> encourage him in every way, like, yeah. sneaking little <laughs> messages of encouragement for him. Yeah, and they're, like, feeding him at one Secretly point. feeding yeah. him, yeah. That was a cool dynamic. Mm-hmm. Very entertaining. I loved the... Uh... <laughs> During during the training scene in the graveyard, where he's just getting like grave stones thrown at him, and then the last yeah. one, like yes. his uncle, just like carries one and just runs into him and it crumbles. <laughs> yeah, so goofy. Yeah, it's like each one's supposed to be like heavier, and then he just like rams him. Mm-hmm. And even like even despite the cheesiness, even despite like all the tropiness, there's actually I I do like the the design of the villain with the different colored eyeball, especially when it, there's like blood all over his face, like in that scene when he's introduced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was actually mm-hmm. a, like really unironically a pretty strong visual. Yeah. So, yeah pretty that's intense. what I mean about the like comic booky visual style to it. Like it seemed really like vivid like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There definitely was a, a level of effort that was put into this movie for sure. Like lots of effort. <laughs> there was this director directed a bunch of things before this. And then the only one after was 1992, the cat. I have no idea what any of these movies are. <laughs> Just kind of want to see the IMDb to see if I recognize anything, but I do not. It's accessible to audiences outside of you know China, I guess. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Apparently, yeah, in the uh, meat grinder finale <laughs> set piece, there was so much fake blood that was used that uh, the actor could not wash the red off his skin for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. According to some trivia. Yeah, fake blood is sticky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it stays. And like that's another reason why I can kind of accept the trend of like CG effects and like action scenes and stuff is just because like practical shooting so with practical easier, yeah. effects has got to be really fucking challenging. So just like mm-hmm. have an actor like getting shot or just like doing anything with like, like blood. A squib. Yeah. yeah. Anything you got to And then up, like basically. the amount of time that that's got to take per day. It's it's a whole thing now. You have to have it's basically like a firework going off in someone's chest. Yeah. You have to set up and have like mm-hmm. an explosive expert on set doing it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you could do like a cheap one. There's like cheaper ones. But... With this much of a bloodbath though, it's not like you could do that in CG. You kind of need the practical <laughs> yeah, it adds element. So much to the tone of this. Yeah, you can't have like plug in squib effects for this kind of movie. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think there are definitely films that have gone really gory that have done CG. Uh Suspiria, I wanna say with CG. Yeah, like CG to me at the end, the mm-hmm. new one. Yeah, there's parts. There's like has a like crazy a amount of blood. So like it's it happens now, and I'm like I I you know it's it is what it is I guess. That weird frame rate effect I think helped that in Suspiria. All right, um, do we have much more to say about this this film? I think we covered most of it. Cover most of the bases. Yeah. yeah, lots of great effects, lots of cringeworthy, in a good way, scenarios. Of of gore and violence, just uncom- uncomfortable situations. But I love that kind of shit. So, what would you guys rate the movie? I would give it a four out of five or eight out of ten. Nice. It's, it's really funny. Yeah, uh, and well done. I don't think it was a masterpiece or anything, <laughs> but it's mm-hmm. funny. I think it's just trying to be a comedy. Yeah, I'm just a smidge under. Um, I, I'll give it a seven out of ten, I reckon. Um, but you talking about the the dub makes me want to check that out. And yeah, I, I for might sure. Might find it funnier actually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, really enjoyable. I definitely recommend watching it if you like that kind of over the top, silly gore stuff. Mm-hmm. I I on Letterbox I think I gave it a four out of five, and then mm-hmm. uh, so then yeah, it's like a eight a, eight out seven or an eight somewhere in that ballpark, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, something like that. Very very <laughs> very uh, well done yeah. movie uh, for what it's trying to be. Uh, and very enjoyable. And I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. It was great. It was fun. Lots of fun. But yeah, definitely I'm going to watch it with the dub next time to see what that's like. Because apparently it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, the, dub, really is, the dub is really yeah, funny. It's, it's very funny. Awesome. I've been playing uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, oh, the, yeah. the video game. Sushi Man? Yeah. Uh, I'm like a few hours in, but I'm playing it with the Japanese dub with subtitles. So it was like interesting, like sort of the reverse of like watching something in like a foreign language with English subtitle or English dub versus mm-hmm. watching something that's supposed to be in English with a foreign language dub. Yeah. 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 Gotta play Ghost of Tsushima with like a Kurosawa mode. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm not that's like the black Kurosawa and white mode. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. That's all the way. I love Kurosawa mode. <laughs> yeah, the idea it's like they they want to homage Akira Kurosawa, and except it's like he had color movies too. So I mean, yeah. it's like it would have been like really cool. Samurai, I don't know. I, I thought it would have been really cool if like there were two Akira Kurosawa filters. There was like a black and white one, and then like a really cool color one where it's like very like Technicolor, like very like because mm-hmm. I just you know think what? of like DLC, they should dreams. Have the, the, I haven't seen all of it, but I've seen you know a yeah. couple of them, and like or like Ron, where like the colors very yeah. vibrant, like yeah. I'm very behind on Kurosawa's filmography. I've only seen Seven Samurai uh, all the way through. Yeah, but like I, I know enough to know that like he's not just done black and white films. So it's like <laughs> would have been cool if like there was like a crazy color option too. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's all a right. fun ass game. Question time. Questions. Okay, so let's head over to the Sardonica subreddit to answer some questions from the community. Let's start with this one then from Ben Dad Killer, who says, If you could, what celebrity would you take control of being John Malkovich style for an entire day and why? This is so funny because oh. I just I was just watching your Jarcast thing where you answered the same question. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. no, they did say it's a, a retread of the, the question from Joe. But... Yeah. <laughs> I have a new answer this time, though. Man, and I, I'm pretty sure when I watched that, I had like a good answer too. But now it's like escaping my mind. If somebody else wants to go first, really? I feel like I'd just be thinking about the all the like, well, the other person, the person that I'd be like inhabiting, like what's going on with them? Like, are they going to be okay? Are they uh, like I, all I'd be thinking about is like the logistics of of this. I'm not sure if I could even pick anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, or just like the the ethics, I guess. <laughs> Fuck the ethics. This is hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't get yes. wound up on the on the ethics yeah. here. So like all right, so pretending we're we are John Cusack and being John Nagovich. But we could choose whoever yeah. we get to control. Yeah. Okay. I would go into David Lynch and then on upload to his YouTube video. A oh, no. video of him <laughs> watching like Cats versus dogs on his mobile phone. Or something. Nice. That's all I do. <laughs> the ultimate art piece. Because <laughs> it would just it would be like a commentary. It's a genius. Yeah, no one would know the truth. They just think he's messing. Yeah, perfect. If I was in someone else's body, I think I'd just pick a girl. I'd like to know what it's like <laughs> be a girl for a day. Yeah, I guess that's what I do. You can't really do that otherwise. Hmm. I think I would take over the body of Doug Walker. Nice. <laughs> Just to see what his life is like. <laughs> what if you don't want to leave? <laughs> yeah, I might not want to leave. I might want to stay. How much control do we actually have when we're inside the person? Full body? control. Like, you could live as somebody else for yeah, a day, basically. Control. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't do like it. I just want to see yeah. like what it's like <laughs> to be Doug yeah. Walker for a day. You'd have to try and act like him. It's like you're controlling. Oh God! Him. <laughs> you have to impersonate him. <laughs> I'll, I'll take over Anna Ferris's body or some shit. Yeah. 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 That's not bad. I'll date Santa Chris Ferris. Pratt for a day. <laughs> I think they got divorced. Oh. Yeah, they did. Well, then maybe I can just send them like really <laughs> passive aggressive texts or something. I, I'll, I'll be Grimes for a day and I'll get the inside scoop on Elon Musk and then I'll report back and I'll be like, yeah, he's kind of a piece of shit in real life. Yeah, that like Kanye would be an interesting one. Oh, God. See what yeah. his life is like. I'm not sure I could. That seems too stressful. <laughs> oh, yeah. It would definitely be stressful. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to impersonate anyone, like, too... Or not impersonate, you know, go into the body of anyone, like, too, like, high up. Just because that just seems like... The President either... of the United States. <laughs> oh, God. And then you can resign yes. for him. Yeah, 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 actually, yeah. I mean, yeah, just, 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 yeah, do that. <laughs> not to get uh, morbid, but, like, uh, in terms of the rules of this uh, scenario, if, like, you're in the other person's conscious and they die do you just get warped back to your conscious or your body or do you get back to or you know i'm sorry your your consciousness is in their body and they die mm. what happens i guess that's a way to find out <laughs> so like yeah, yeah you're thinking way deeper than i am about this uh, concept right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get grimes i guess i'd be grimes for a day <laughs> yeah okay if I uh, randomly yell out a celebrity name, it's because I've realized I want to actually be there. Yeah, no, if you, yeah just, just scream it as loud as you can <laughs> when it comes to you. Uh, yeah. Apex Head has one for us. 
So Gaspar Noé's Irreversible is getting a worldwide re-release on <gasps> August 26th this year, with a major restor restoration of the original 16mm print and fully remastered in 4K, as well as an additional cut called Straight Cut. When asked, <laughs> Noé described the new cut as, in many ways, stronger than the original, since the new cut shows the film in correct chronological order, re-edited and shuffled to make it flow from beginning to end. You guys have expressed your disapproval of filmmakers tampering with their old films, but what do you think of this particular concept? Can this additional and notably optional new cut add to the original's themes of fatalism, cosmicism, time, and morality, or perhaps withdraw meaning, removing the essence of what made Irreversible great? Thoughts on this decision, and since all of you seem to be fans of his work, including Jared, will you be watching it? I feel like P. Rosenberg or Rosenberg would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, as a reference to the Charlie Cotton book. I guess if you're going to reverse a movie, it's going to be irreversible. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 big, the biggest takeaway for me is the optional part. If you're not replacing yeah. the movie, then go for it. Have as many different versions mm -hmm. as you want. No issues there. And sure. I'll check it out, too, if, if apparently it's better, according He's to him. He's an experimental know. filmmaker. He takes a lot of risks and does a lot of weird things. And this is, Very like, true. I think, one of those where he's just like, oh, I'm going to take a movie I made and like re-edit it like differently <laughs> so i do see it as more of like an artistic decision than like i don't know uh i guess what george lucas is doing is more of an artistic decision too but it got to a point where he was like remastering every blu-ray release like every yeah. release of star wars he would add not some optional to it was very it's silly the biggest yeah. yeah and it wasn't optional either right he was like trying to rewrite history i don't think that's what irreversible is really doing <laughs> with this I think this is. I would like to see it though. I would just like to see the other what they cut do will it. just be called reversible. <laughs> <laughs> it should be forwards. So the credits will be at the end. In, <laughs> yeah, in I this guess cut, so. the credits are at the very beginning. Yeah, man. So. I want to watch that movie well, again. Well, it'll also be mm. like it'll actually be uh, increasingly queasy this time instead of the opposite. Yeah, uh, like yeah. Mm. The first half, it's like he, he intentionally has like a sound. Yeah, without saying any of the story, without anything, yeah. There's like a, a sound or something that he employs. It's like the whatever the frequency or the pitch or whatever. It's like brown note. Yeah, or, or yeah, something, uh, something like that. <laughs> but for like the oak, for like the first half, for yeah. like or something like that, where where like I think the idea was that like he was trying to just like fuck with people in the theaters. I want to get them to leave <laughs> as quickly as possible. <laughs> He's a very challenging, like, director. That's, that's, that's what I love I like about him. him. Wouldn't yeah. want it any other way. Climax was, uh, that was a great experience. I got to see, mm -hmm. I saw that literally in mm -hmm. the front row of the theater. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, as long as it's optional, it's fine. I'll watch it. it sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. Don't rewrite history. No. Give me that fucking Evil Dead Blu-ray already, Sam Raimi. Give me the original <laughs> fucking <laughs> cut of the Evil Dead on Blu-ray. Give me that in HD. I want it. Makes me mad. Yeah. <laughs> See all the crew members in their full glory. All right, next question. Thanos Thick Man has one for us. Nice. You guys have discussed the superhero movie phenomenon a myriad of times in the past. Even though superhero fatigue has been brought up after many major releases, it seems that this train is showing no signs of stopping. So... How soon do you think this trend will finally die down, and what subgenre do you think might take its place? It's oh, almost impossible no. to predict. Yeah. <laughs> if I knew, I would bank like I would be investing in those films. <laughs> I bet like there's a bunch of people in Hollywood trying to figure out that same thing. Yeah. I don't know what the genre or whatever it would be that would replace it, but like, if the possibility of less of a genre like prevalence and more of like a wave of like you know. A sort of filmmaking like style or uh, mm -hmm. uh, or philosophy where you know where, where it's like we're getting more films by people with, who who have things that they want to actually say that are really important that'd be nice but that's not the most marketable yeah, thing so because then as soon as soon as it becomes something that they think that they could market then they're not gonna it's not like they can do that it's it's like oxymoronic in a way it's like a, a big studio doesn't know how to make something personal Right, mm -hmm. it's not. <laughs> it defeats the point of personal. A yeah, big studio. You, can, you can't, can't be mass personal. produce <laughs> yeah. something like yeah. that. I mean, yeah, I guess it's just I'm thinking about like the condition these studios will be in, mm -hmm. like as a result of this year, 
Yeah. Yeah. A two fours got some attention. <laughs> They're like the only ones who make good movies. Oh well, like. yeah, first cow. <laughs> Just watched that one actually. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a great little, great little oh, movie. I got, I still got to see that one though. It's really nice. It's like a really, it's like a nice, just like respite in terms of like you know what you would expect from like new releases nowadays, in terms mm-hmm. of like the pacing and like the tone and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like this is like very, very. Uh, uh, it's very slow. Yeah, it's it's slow. It was like lush though. It was like well shot. It, yeah, it looked really nice, and I, I it, it had like just enough going on with it for me that like i was i i you know i i, I enjoyed it and uh i, I like the the relationship between the two leads so the next big genre is going to be a bunch of first cows <laughs> yeah i'm not saying the first, first cow cinema 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 cinema. <laughs> yeah we're not getting for a bunch of first cows unfortunately second cow great, third cow yeah damn somebody call james cameron <laughs> get him to make a fifth cow <laughs> yeah beyond the water <laughs> underwater cow <laughs> Underwater and, cow. and there's a no, spinoff starring a bull. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any particular genre like overtaking superhero movies. Perhaps like, no, nah, I can't even say. I really couldn't. Superhero movies seem to have the whole market <laughs> like locked down. Do you think they're gonna? It's still gonna be that way. Like when people go back into the theaters. Well, and stuff? here's the thing: is like I've always known that the market would get so oversaturated that people would just lose interest, but. Despite people losing interest, they're still watching the movies. <laughs> so, like, nobody is interested anymore, but they're still watching is what's happening right now. <laughs> so it's like, mm. how, do you, how do you stop this trend when it's still making money? People are just seeing these out of obligation at this point. There's enough new people watching the films now. Like, younger generations come up and watch the Marvel films and like them. They have their whole generation of superheroes. Mm-hmm. The films do really well worldwide now. So... It's just more people are exposed to it. I think people just really like superhero films. They're not going to yeah. go away anytime soon. <laughs> it will not die willingly. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the whole concept of just being, you know, special powers unlike anyone else, just like as a as like a marketable concept, it's like the Bible. Yeah, it's very mythic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's an, it's a tale ingrained to everyone, yeah. right? And that's why kids just love acting it out. They love being the superhero. And if you're using pre-existing characters, everything's already written, so uh-huh. gotta make yeah. some tweaks here and there. Thor is like literally like a character like that. But <laughs> I guess what I meant by that comparison, also just in terms of like how much it's stuck. They're as popular as they are, and it doesn't seem like they're they have any sign of like dying out. Mm-hmm. Oh, you think it's like a there's like like a cult aspect to it too i don't have any numbers in front of me in terms of like what people are watching this year like bad boys for life number one <laughs> yeah that was very successful it... yeah i think so there's like no it's like i think i think really? doolittle is number two and that movie lost money <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's a funny year do you think that like the year we figure our shit regarding covid and movie theaters are back like do you think it's gonna be like the superhero fans are just going to immediately flock to the theaters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the more I'm talking, I can see that happening. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah. Think they want to see Black Widow. They probably would. Whatever. They probably Whatever's would. Coming out. There's like a constant stream of just superhero stuff. Like even if you turn on the TV, there's a bunch of superhero shows, and on Netflix, and on Disney Plus, and there's the comics yeah. too. People are so ingrained in the world of it that it's not going to go away. Like, you don't think that there's it's any kind beyond of film. Soon? Yeah, it's like beyond like just the, the it's not a film genre. It's like if you love superheroes, it is like you said, it's like a religion where like people yeah. have posters yeah, and they love way. the characters yeah. and they follow them and like like it's it's crazy. They dress in costumes. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I don't think that's going away anytime soon. If that's the case, then I guess yeah, we would hope that you just be getting more interesting superhero stories that are, you know, challenging the conventions of the ones that came mm-hmm. before. That's what I hope for. I hope it evolves. Yeah, uh, as far as the MC, like the superhero movies, uh, the trend goes, I think it kind of dies when the MCU dies, because because basically that's why yeah. it is the size it is, because they're all copying the MCU and trying to ride the coattails of it, basically. So when right. when that eventually comes to an end, I have a feeling it's going to be a bit more loose with it. But as far as like a a new trend to maybe take it over, if I think about it, just in pure like chasing the money and the valuable ip kind of trends just to grow and grow and grow i don't know we are kind of at the end of the superhero movie like original works we're already delving into like the eternals and all these random characters no one like knows about 
Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're onto the Cimmerillion <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I'm not convinced people are going to be sold on that until the X-Men come in. Then that will be like another 10 years. But as far as another like competitor, I really have a bad feeling about video game movies. Mm. Um, oh, God. Those, you think those are going to pop off? <laughs> I was thinking like, that Nobody too, likes yeah. them. No, but they make money though. This Sonic uh, movie. The Uncharted movie? I don't know. All the ones aimed at children, I think, are going to be the game that. changers. Oh, yeah, I guess Mario so. movie is going to be huge. Five Nights Sonic at Freddy's. Movies are already huge. If they get that Minecraft that movie out, that would be huge. Minecraft Uncharted movie. movie, This Last of Us I, I, I stuff. I think a Fortnite movie would do very well. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite movie. Oh, there's a and Monster then they can Hunter play movie. Inception in the movie. <laughs> it would be in like Fortnite, a bunch of pop culture in the movie, references. Inception, yeah. Inception. They take like the Lego movie template, basically. Yeah. The The games industry is much bigger than the comic book industry. And it's way more valuable in terms of mm. just recognizable IPs and sure. the just sure. countless amount of kids there are to yeah. kind of milk for it. And so like that's... like Sony could make those movies and they have a lot of characters like within that universe that could like cross over. Nathan Drake could meet, I don't know, Joel, like whatever they you know, whatever they want to do. Probably something better than that. We need a Halo Infinite standalone movie with Craig. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. Then there will be spin offs though. That's what they gotta do I making want to, I wanna know who yes. Craig is. Yeah. I wanna get into the mind of this character. Why is he so sad? Yeah, I have a bad feeling. Yep. <laughs> as long as there's still good, like, underground stuff being made, I guess as, like, a film fan, that's, like, kind of what I care about. But, like... It's just, yeah, this, in- this growth, I just... this I don't know how you sustain it without just chasing the, the numbers behind it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. They can just keep remaking movies, too, which is what they usually do. They just remake the same films again. Yay! Just reboot Batman again, yeah. reboot... Batman, Invisible yeah. Man, horror sort of films, find the just reboot that them. works mm-hmm. and then dress it differently, I guess. Modernize it, yeah. But... You can update it, make it animated. I don't know. They did that with, like, Scooby-Doo. They made it live action, now it's CG animated again. And it's, yeah. You know, just whatever, whatever people want. It's fine. All right. Uh, do we want to do, I guess, one more question? Let's end on this one from uh, Reddit's R Word 420. Spielberg chose not to accept any money for his work on Schindler's List and instead donated his salary. Do you think other directors that make movies about horrific events in history should do the same? Spielberg has a lot of money. Yeah. That's why he. Yeah, that's the thing. He's in a, do that. a yeah, very yeah, good position. Some directors to do that. can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it should be expected necessarily. No, it's not nice at all. He did it, but yeah, he was mm-hmm. in a special scenario he's yeah. fucking steven spielberg i don't know i don't even like i'm not i'm not even like that against people monetizing their youtube videos about like touchy subjects or like drama or apologizing there seems to be this weird thing where it's like i've demonetized this video so so don't worry but it's like you're still getting attention on your channel and <laughs> i don't know yeah <laughs> like you're yeah i, I don't really That's see the difference like really move. yeah it's so weird mm-hmm. yeah but i don't see anything wrong with making money as long as the way you're doing it is ethical as long as you're not being exploitative i guess which schindler's list i don't think is an exploitative movie really so or even like um what's tarantino's uh world war ii bastards glorious bastards that that is like over the top and yeah you know it's going for a certain tone but i don't think anyone would expect tarantino to (laughs) give his wages to some like charity or you know yeah yeah or, i don't know if like you're making a i don't know a movie about like another hot button topic if you if you got nazis in a movie like that's I, that's been done in every which way there's yeah. like there's like campy horror movies of like snow nazis or something i don't even remember <laughs> like, oh, yeah, like yeah. Dead snow. Yeah. i think it's literally yeah. called dead snow <laughs> yeah dead i never saw yeah. it i just saw the cover or something but yeah i mean like uh, Perhaps if you're making a, a film about like a very recent event, like nobody wants nobody wants to see like a George Floyd movie right now. Like, <laughs> wait oh. a bit. <laughs> you know, it might it might be a little not tasteful. Yeah. United ninety three came out like five years after nine eleven. I was like, yeah, pretty, I seen that. pretty soon after. Did it do yeah. well? Did it? Did it? People like, liked was it. it critically. Yeah, people liked yeah, it a lot. It's a good film. Yeah. It was nominated yeah, for two Oscars. Yeah, I don't think directors should be expected to not make money off of a movie they direct. I think the more important aspect is how tastefully the film itself is, not whether or not there's a profit. 
Sure. Yeah. Because, I mean, then just go a step further, give away the whole movie for free. Then the studio shouldn't make money off of it either, right? If you're Mm -hmm. going to take that to its You can apply that to any film, really. Like any film with a sensitive issue. You can go, well, you got to give your money to this charity that was like, you know, has to do with that issue. And I don't know if every film needs that. It's a show of good faith, but I don't think it It should be mandated. It's a show of good faith. Yeah. I don't think it should be required. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of just like up to you. What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. People donate to charity anyway. I bet Spielberg's donated to charities aside from like donating that that amount to from the Schindler's List. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's donated since and before. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. What if you what if you like say before the movie's even out, like I'm donating all the proceeds of this film to X charity, and then the movie just flops. It's like well, you could have just donated money out of your own pocket or something. <laughs> Probably yeah. would have done it better. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. I guess that about does it for question time. Question time is done. Yeah. There is a film recommendation for the next episode, and I believe it is Ralph's turn. It's my to turn. Recommend. Oh boy, it's Ralphie's turn, and I get to here. recommend a trilogy too, because yeah. like we're not going to have anything else to talk about next week, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we got extra time too. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what you were predicting, but I'm going to recommend a trilogy from the 60s called the Dollars Trilogy. Oh. So for those of you who don't know, oh, awesome. it's a fistful of dollars from 1964 for a few dollars more, 1965. And then I think the one most people know is The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, which is mm-hmm. 1966. They're not really that connected, like tonally yeah. or... I guess yeah, totally they're connected. Not really the story, though. Movie. Yeah, the, the bad story is, is a great movie. Uh-huh. You can watch all of them on their own, basically. They do stand on their own. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that is next it time. Alternatively, long, <laughs> called the Man with No Name trilogy. Yeah, yeah it has a few yeah. names. Okay. All right. So if you don't want to be spoiled yeah, for the Man with No Name trilogy or the Dollars trilogy, the ugh, trilogy. voice crack trilogy, <laughs> then make sure to watch it before the next episode of this podcast is out, which should be in. Bah, my voice is dying. What happened? Which should be in two <laughs> weeks from this one airing publicly. Uh, if you go to sardonicast.com and sign up for premium, two dollars a month, you can get these episodes early as they're edited. Also, Patreon.com/sardonicast, and also we got merch. Links in the descriptions. Uh, thank you so much, Jared, for joining on the podcast. Uh, thank that was a fun you discussion. So much for, for- for having me this was a this actually was a lot of fun i, I enjoyed <laughs> yeah, this a lot it was a lot of fun thank yeah, you for man, coming for on. on do you have anything you want to plug uh i mean i'm on twitter uh just i guess you can follow me what's at, your twitter it's just real jared gilman not the fake one yeah not not the fake one they're actually like a, a few they're like <laughs> if you look up my name on twitter they're like there's like a list of jared gilman's and i, I was a little oh, no. surprised but I just kind of post jokes or film stuff, <laughs> mm-hmm. pictures of my cat or videos of my cat. Nice. I don't know. Well, hopefully I'll be in more things in the future. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward <laughs> to seeing see what you do screen. with your career. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. As a, as a watcher of the podcast. Thank you. Thank well, you I so appreciate much. that you listen too. Yeah. All right. Thank you everybody for listening. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.